I'm Dr. Ernest Jackson, and I'm honored to share with you the living Word of God. If you were listening to the program on last week, we found out some unusual things. We're continuing to talk about this undertaking. In this undertaking, there's some things that we need to know that we don't know that we have to find out about to be successful. Now, this week we're going to show you a couple of things and we're going to twist something straight. <laughs> For example, we're going to show you in the scripture today with the understanding that the Word of God gives. Now, you know, we believe and understood by the scripture that the soul that sins, it shall die. And the wages of sin is death. But what if sins can be eaten? as in eaten. What if they can be eaten? According to the scriptures, they can be. We're going to show you. Also, consider this. You know the scripture where people are always talking about, you know, all I want to hear the Lord say is, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter into the joys of the Lord. And they say, that's what the Bible says? That's what it says. Uh, what if it doesn't? What if it doesn't, and what if Jesus didn't say it, especially the way we thought he said it? That's just for starters. What about obedience is such a necessity, and keeping his commandments is such a necessity, that neither you, I, or anybody else can enter into the gates of heaven without it. We are not even capable of having a right to the tree of life or to drink of the waters of life. That's going to be in God's kingdom. We can't even get in if we haven't kept his commandments. So my thinking is, listen, this is where the rubber meets the road. A lot of times we go along, just, you know, trying to do. Now, you can't keep his commandments if you don't know them. You can't do what the Lord says to do if you don't know what he said to do. So, we're in trouble. We're in trouble. Here's another one. How about we can be in Christ and still be lost? Our actions in him can cause him to take us out of him. Imagine, here you and I in Christ going along, and there's certain requirements that we have to fulfill, and if we don't, the Father will take us out of Christ. He'll take us aside. It's scripture. This is the scary part. This is the scary part, because we don't know these things are there. He does. We got Bibles at home. We got Bibles on our phone. And we don't read His Word. We don't study His Word. So how are we going to be obedient? We're going to find out some things that are really, really terrible about this God. Last week we found out the Lord was His name. We showed you last week how God said He would take men and dash them together, the father against the son, and men one against another, and dash them to, uh, against each other, and destroy them. He said that. Now we know God destroyed practically every bit of Israel that came out of the wilderness. He destroyed them that came out of Egypt. He destroyed practically every one of them. Uh, but now he done got creative, or he was creative. Imagine this same God has chased off armies that were attacking Israel by sending a swarm of bees or wasps. Look how our God can lead out and protect us and guide us and instruct us. But we won't obey Him. In today's society, I'm going to say something strong, stop following every wind and doctrine and follow the book. Find the important things that God wants us to have. Get those. 
He even says so. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added. No, we want to turn around and get those things first and get the other ones when we get good and ready. And imagine me or you showing up in the last day. I was telling someone the other day, you know, folks like, oh, we're going to be resurrected. Uh, there's one problem with that that you didn't know. Everybody's going to be resurrected. You may not have known that. That's in Revelation 2. The sea is going to give up its dead. Death and hell is going to give up its dead. Now, what do, what do you think that means? They're already dead. <laughs> There's some of them already in hell. They're going to be given up. And the sea is going to give up their dead. And then that was going to end up happening. We're all going to come back into the body that we committed the sin in and be judged. And so we're all going to be resurrected. But it depends on you where you spend your resurrection season with God or without Him. Now, I was telling someone just this week past, the uniqueness of this whole real salvation thing, God designed it. He planned it. He set the foundation and he did most of the work. All you and I have to do is obey him and by obeying him we can assure ourselves a place in the kingdom of God simply by obeying him. And we still won't do it. So last week in uh, Jeremiah 13 and 23 I think I showed it but let's go there now. Jeremiah 13 and 23 and they asked the question, can the Ethiopian change his skin or the leopard his spots? Then may ye also do good that are accustomed to do evil. See, here's what people think at the last day. You're going to say, Lord, forgive me on their deathbed. God, forgive me for my sins. And that's going to ride with God. He said, if this has been in you the whole time, you can't change that no more than the Ethiopian can change his skin color. Oh, for those of you that think at the last minute, your plan, wait, I got this strange thing. How do we think we're going to outsmart a God that already knows our thoughts in advance? So we're going to sin our whole lives and do whatever we want to do in the last minute. <laughs> forgive me of my sins, Lord, forgive me, just to make it into the kingdom. Uh-uh. And if you go over to Revelation, the 22nd chapter, it tells you that he that is filthy, let him be filthy still. Uh-oh. He that is sinful, he that is this, let him be this, this. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. He, he that is holy, let him be holy still. In other words, you're going to be in a state of being that you can't get out at the last minute. Don't play with this thing. Please, sir, please, ma'am, don't play with this thing. And oh, by the way, us church folks... <laughs> uh, us folks that, you know, we, 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 we believe the Lord, us believers... Us confessors, us church folks that are going along and we're not paying attention. Let me show you something else. See, the Spirit, I'm talking about, the Spirit of God speaking to me. He leads me. So why haven't you let him lead you out of the corruption you've been living in? I had to, so do you. Now, we think... Because, you know, people, I've heard people say different times, I ask them questions. Well, you know, my pastor don't preach that and this don't do. Well, that has nothing to do with it because remember this God that you're supposed to be serving, this God we're supposed to be walking with, he has a heart and a mind of his own and he made men. So he knows your needs if you're reaching out to him. And most of the time we're not. We're looking for a loophole as an excuse. Well, they don't preach that. They don't do this. But the Spirit of God knows that you should know. When, when we want to get spiritual, we go, no, His Spirit bear works with my spirit. We get real spiritual. I know the Lord. His Spirit bear with my spirit. Well, why in His Spirit bear with your spirit to get you and I out of falsehood? I'm going to show you scripture, which I've read before, that God knows when we're going into falsehood, and He knows that we know the difference. Because if your heart is right, he will quicken it and make you aware that it's wrong. And you still go there anyway, because we're looking for comfort zones. Watch this. Uh, 24. Therefore will I scatter them as stubble that passes away by passes by, excuse me, passes away by the wind of the wilderness. 
This is your lot. Look at this. God is saying, this is your lot. You know what, know what that means? Because you wouldn't listen, this is what you get. This is your portion. This is your destiny. Because you wouldn't obey me, you're destined to fall. You're destined to stumble. We can't blame God on that. Watch this. This is your destiny, the portion of thy measure from me, saith the Lord. Because you done played the game and played the fool. This is your portion. This is your destiny from me. Because you wouldn't do what I told you to do. Watch this. Uh, watch this. It said, from me, saith the Lord. And watch, he gives an explanation. He said, you know why? So go, but, but, but Lord, why? Why, Lord? Why, Jesus? He goes, he tells you. Because thou hast forgotten me. See? The fact that we don't know a lot of stuff and we ain't got a uh, wisdom from God to grow and develop is because we've forgotten the Lord. And I'm going to show you. One of the things that we don't realize that can keep us out of the kingdom is not only, like I said last week, we need to obtain what he wants us to have and then maintain it. And then, watch this, I'm going to show you some scriptures so that even if you got it and you're walking in it, you can't stay there. Because see, we like, in our mindset, we like to believe, okay, once I'm in the church and I'm living clean, you know, I ain't doing all the things I used to do, and we're on our way to heaven. No, you're not. Oh, no, you're not. Because you're not reading the word. You don't know that you are not and I am not on our way to heaven because we're in church, even if we're living clean. That is not it. We don't read the scripture. Watch this. And he said, That is our lot, the portion of thy measure from me, saith the Lord, because thou hast forgotten me. And guess what? And I'm mad with you because you trusted in falsehood. People that have walked away from ministries that had pure, strong word that would lift them up and encourage them and challenge their walk. They step away from them because, you know, it's like, <laughs> if I don't have to do all this, I ain't going to do all this. Yeah, but see, uh, wherever you are, regardless, you have to maintain, obtain, and maintain this life because God will be upset with us because we trusted in falsehood. Because we get cute when we get behind the scene talking about people, yeah. That doctor over there, they, them folks is crazy. They're on their way to hell. That doctor over there, yeah, well, 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 but, but what you're following ain't so much better because you're not committed. See, this word, this living word, this life-giving word, watch this. This word that birthed us into Christ commands attention. This, in this undertaking, you have to be engaged and engaged at his pace, his development, his growth, or God will come snatch your hips, my hips, his hips, their hips, even snatch us from Christ. You didn't know that? Oh, yeah, it's in the book. I'm going to show you. Because <clears throat> you trusted in falsehood. All right, let's go over here and look at something else. Let's go to Hosea. Now, in uh, back in Jeremiah 13 and above, you read where God smashed folks together, and he told them, said, because, and I will destroy them. I'm not going to spare. I spare not. I'm not going to have no pity, but I will destroy them. Now, in Hosea 4, one of the scriptures that we often quote, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, but we, we thought that was just that simply. No, there's much more to that. And God was upset with them like he's upset with our churches today. Watch this. Hosea 4 and 1. Hear the word of the Lord, ye children of Israel, or ye children of um, uh, mm -hmm, Charlotte, North Carolina, Washington, D.C., Connecticut, <laughs> New Haven, West Haven, Hamden. Right? For the Lord has controversy with, look, with the inhabitants of the land. God, you know what? I got a problem with y'all, the Lord is saying. I got a problem with y'all. I'm upset. I got a problem with you. I have controversy. The Lord has controversy with thee. And what would controversy mean, Lord? Oh, I'm contesting. You are become my adversary. I'm, I'm, you know, 
I'm pleading that I got a strife with you. I'm striving with you, the Lord says. I'm upset. You got me upset with the inhabitants of the land because there is no truth. See? And he said, and ye shall we love, as we shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Why aren't you free? Why aren't we free? Stop quoting scripture because you can. And your brain works, we get that. Mind works, we get that. No big deal. It's in the doing. Be ye not hearers of the word only, but be ye doers of the word. Only the doers of the word are justified before him. So we like to get in the company of other folks and, and, and feel to be a part of. And because we say stuff and then we go, oh, 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 hallelujah. And we wave our hands and we think that's acceptable with God. You need to stop looking at folks and look up because our redemption draw it nigh and we're not paying attention. He said there's no truth. No mercy, no knowledge of God in the land. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. This is what he was mad about. Well, watch what, she, watch what the problem is, and you'll see that the same conditions exist today. Watch. Watch what he says in the second verse. By swearing and lying and killing and stealing and committing adultery, they break out blood touching blood. Uh-oh. Look, do what you got to do. I mean, ever since I, the Lord changed me, made me a new creature, <laughs> brought me out, uh, this has been in churches, and you've seen it on TV. In, in certain places, a uh, pastor sleeping with his, with his uh, one of his minister's wives, the guy walk up by the pastor preach and shoot him in the head, kill him, <laughs> right there. Folks break out and fight. Folks in church with guns and stuff. Deacons and elders sleeping with folks, nurses sleeping with folks. What kind of mess is this? Are we paying attention that God is watching this? God is watching. And we lie. I know people that lie so quick. You ask them their name. Your name is George. Yeah, it, yeah, it is. It. Well, you know your name ain't George. They lie that quick. And uh, uh, watch what I'm saying. Your life is your life. Live it how you like. But um, if you plan to be accepted by God, in this undertaking, you got to get that right. You, you got to put in the time. I told someone this this week, last week. Let me tell you something. You need to spend regimental time with God. Set it aside. Set, give God some time. No matter what anybody says. First of all, get your life clean. Get somebody say, I know I'm saved. No, no, no. The word saved or salvation means delivered. Look at that. Are you delivered from sin? I know my sins are forgiven, but are you delivered from it? So it's, it can't be a thing behind the scenes in the mind of God. I forgive him. I forgive her. And it's not broken off your life. It doesn't work that way. If it's not broken off your life, you know, with class two and four, we've, there's many ones of doctrine. We believe a lot of stuff. But, you know, the sins that thus old so easily beset us, we should have that broken off our lives. Are you comfortably, comfortably lying? I got a girlfriend on the side and a wife, and I'm on a deacon board, and I'm comfortable with that? Something has to be broken in my life. And here's what we're going to find out. If it's not, you're not delivered according to the word of God, then brother, sister, you, me, he, she, we, us, are not saved. The word save means rescue. The Lord charges in for the rescue, and he comes to rescue you. If you are not delivered, don't stay delivered, you are not a new creature. You have become old creature. Oh, okay. And if I become old creature, I'm not saved either. So let's not fool us. So look what the scripture says. The God is upset because this is going on amongst his people. How do we name the name of the Lord and continue to do this mess? <clears throat> Watch this. And break out blood to blood. We don't want to get too far in that. But watch this. Therefore shall the land mourn, and every one that dwelleth therein shall languish with the beasts of the field and with the fowls of heaven. Yea, the fish of the sea also shall be taken away. Watch this. Let no man strive nor reprove another. It said, yet. 
no man, yet no man strive or reprove. And then we got it in the churches where pastors know folks are doing this. They're doing it right in front of them. They know what's going on, and you don't reprove them? You don't come, look, I'm a pastor, and the folks that I shepherd, they know that you can live your own life, but if you ain't living right, you can't do nothing in this ministry. Nothing. Somebody said, well, so, but they give their money. They give their money if they want to. Anybody that knows me, I've got people who know me for more than 20 years. I don't ask for a dime. Never have, and I don't have people do it for me. So y'all get that clear. I don't ask for a dime. I don't have people do it for me. If any money is given to me or raised for me, someone else does it on their own. I don't touch it. So I'm not in this for the money. I'm in this to help folks. I'm in this for obedience. So the scripture letting us know, look, you don't warn folks, and I warn folks. I warn them hardly. Wait a minute, don't do this. You have to elder, you have to pastor, you have to preacher, so-called apostle and prophet. If you don't warn the people, God is watching you. If you don't stop that, I know how it is. Folks like, well, you know, if you, 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 you press people too much, they'll leave. I'd rather you leave than God kill me for not telling you truth. And you get some people on teeth them, and you know what? How people been beaten down for years. They've been made to feel guilty and condemned for years. Don't you think it's time out for that? No. It's, it's, and look, we're supposed to watch for their souls. If you're not watching for their souls, you're not obeying God. Watch this. Therefore shalt thou fall. Look at this. This uh, uh, strive no reprove them. Back to that. For thy, for thy people are as that strive with the priest. They'll tell the wait a minute, pastor, you, you ain't my daddy, no, I'm your pastor, and if you want to do like I ask you to do or instruct you to do, you leave. You can't, uh, you can't be in the office here. Well, I'm going to leave. Okay, bye. Got to be straight with God. I'm going to be straight with God. Do what you got to do. Therefore shalt thou fall in that look in the day, fifth verse, and the prophet also shall fall with thee in the night. And I will destroy thy mother. Look at this. Mm, 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 mm. I'm going to destroy your mother. Is that crazy or what? Watch God. <laughs> My people also are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee. That there shall be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God. I will also, look at this. Yeah, watch this. I will, <laughs> ooh, you've forgotten the Lord of God. I will also forget thy children. Ooh, God said, you know what? You can't be priest for me no more. And I was blessing your children. You won't obey me, I'm going to forget your kids. I'm God. Don't play with me. Watch this, this is going to get real strange. Watch, 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 watch. Seventh verse, watch this. As they were increased, so they sinned against me. Therefore will I charge their glory, change, uh, change, excuse me, change their glory into shame. Watch this one. They eat up the sin of my people. Ooh. And they set their heart on their iniquity. People know when you're doing wrong, they don't correct you. They want to leave you where you are because it's more advantageous for them to keep you right there. So they're consuming not only your sin, but you in the midst of it. In Revelation of the Scripture, talking about how they make a merchandise of you. And a lot of people do that when a man or woman in the church where folks are sinning and cutting up and doing whatever they want to do, don't warn you they're making merchandise of you. <clears throat> and look what it says. And they set their hearts on their iniquities. Oh my God. Why would a person set their heart on you doing wrong if they didn't think it was beneficial? Told you the sin could be eaten. Look at that. So they eat and they set their heart on it. They're counting on you failing. They're counting on you messing up. I mean, the thought of that to me alone is, look, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Uh-uh. You counting on me failing? You counting on me sinning? You planning this out? You watching? Well, whether you know or not, that's what's taking place. 
And if you are being merchandise for anyone, why sit you there and die? Um, I think I'll leave that alone for the, for the moment. Let's go on to Titus. I want to show you something. One of the problems, we're, we're not at the balance point that God wants us to be. I'm going to say that so you understand what I mean as I bring this up. Watch. Titus, the third chapter and the thirteenth verse. Titus, that's done first, second Timothy, then Titus, over the New Testament. <laughs> Titus 3 and 13. Titus 3 and 13, and I'm reading. Bring Zenos, the Lord, and Apollos on their journey diligently, that nothing be waiting or wanting, excuse me, unto them. Make sure they got everything they need. Now watch this next portion. 14. And let ours, those that are with them, let ours also learn to maintain good works. Get in God and maintain the good works. And there's a reason for it. Look at it. Maintain good works for necess necessary use. Because you need to, and you want to maintain good works because you've got to come this way again. You've got to use these things again. So maintain good works for necessary use. Watch this. Watch this. That they be not unfruitful. Certain things you have to maintain not to fall into unfruitfulness. Why? Hmm. Well, what if, what if, God wanted you more fruitful than you are and wanted me more fruitful than I am and but we're not I wonder what happens John 15 and 1 John 15 and 1 I am the true vine this is Jesus and my father is the husband man. Watch this. Second verse. Ready? Here we go. Every branch in me, every branch in me, right? Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. Oh, Jesus. We're in Christ. Even if we, 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 we're where we're supposed to be. It's not good enough. Look what it says. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he who God takes away. So I'm in the Lord, I'm on the way to heaven so glad, and I'm shouting and praying the Lord all, all the time, and he's watching to see if I'm fruitful or not. Well, we were talking about, we got to do with the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, long, suffering, good, and just make perfect faith. Yeah, 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 whatever. And if you're not fruitful the way He wants you to be, and you're in Christ, you're in Jesus, the Father will take us away. Oh, God. We don't know who we're dealing with. We have no idea. We really don't. We really don't. It says it clearly today. It's been. It's been it's been ever since he saved me, 1967, so it's been over 55 years. <laughs> oh God, what's this? Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purges it. Why? Oh, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. So why aren't we clean yet? You see what he's saying? We're, we're clean through the word he's spoken. Why aren't we delivered? We're in the church. We're naming the name of the Lord. I'm a deacon. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a nurse. I'm a this. I'm a usher. I'm a this. And da, 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 da. And you're not clean yet? When I was a young, young fella, 16, 17 years old, and they made me junior deacon, if I did something that I thought was wrong, I went to the pastor because I would help with the offerings, you know, and lead the boats. And if I did something I thought, you know, was wrong before the Lord, I go to the pastor and say, Pastor, um, I don't think I should be taking the offering today. And what could be the reason? Well, something happened when I was doing that time, and something may have came up, and I may have lied. I go, hmm. 
I then after my conviction would come, I'm gonna, oh God, I didn't, I didn't lie. So I go to my pastor. He go, Deacon Jackson, come on. I go, I go, first minute say, Pastor, I, I can't do it. They, oh, I go to him before service. Have Deacon so and so do it. So I can't do it. I lied last night. Some of us lie so much we 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 on cloud of lies, and we think we're going to heaven. Where's the conviction of God in your life? Preacher, elder, minister, brother, sister, where's the conviction? Where's the consciousness of God that you don't lie at all? Somebody said, well, we all tell lies. No, we don't. I don't. I did when I was younger because, you know, I had to learn. And once I learn, and even in Revelation, talking about everything that maketh a lie is not accepted. Everything to make, and then to one, one chapter to start talking about all the things that are coming. He said, and all liars shall be cast into the lake of fire. All liars. Oh. And he didn't say all lot of all the other things. He didn't say all the hormones and all this, but he said all liars. And we're comfortable lying? What are we thinking? Watch this. Now, you, <laughs> fourth verse. Abide in me and I in you as... The branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except ye abide in me. And we're not fruitful. We don't even know we have to be. But he tells you that if you are a branch and you're not fruitful, the Father himself will take us away. Uncomfortable yet? We should be. Now you can go on further down, read on down into that. Um through the sixth verse, but let me see, maybe I want to hit a couple of things on that. No, 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 no. Let's go to uh, the fifth verse. Yeah, I better, I better read the five and six, I better. Okay, five. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. How is he going to be in me and I in him when I'm not praying? When I'm not shut away with God at all any day? Or even every day? The Lord taught me when I was 16 years old to steal away at least an hour a day at 16. He taught me. He told me to give him an hour, and I would pray for him. Now then, he came back after so long and said, Now I want you to break that hour down. I want you to pray the first half hour, and then study the word. He said, Always pray first, so I can quicken the word in you. He taught me this at 16 years old, 17 years old. How is it that you've grown, folks? He ain't taught you that, and you're so spiritual. What are we thinking? Most of us aren't hearing God. That's what the problem is. Watch this. I'll show you. What, 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 what? <laughs> what's, what's this? You can't do nothing without me. 16. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. The life that is in me won't flow through you. You're withered. And men gather them and cast them into fire and they are burnt. What do you think that means? So you, you not only need to understand that we have to come up to his standards. And we haven't. And then you can't wait long before you become fruitful because the Father is watching. And if you don't become fruitful, the Father taketh us away. He's got a timetable that we should become fruitful. But not. Huh? Are you still here? Somebody said, Why why you got to go ahead, Doc? Wait, I can do another one. Watch this. <laughs> Let's go over here to Let's go over here to uh, Matthews, the 25th chapter. You know, I want, just like the Lord said in the Bible, the Lord told the people, He said, you know what? Uh, uh, <laughs> well done, now good and faithful servant. I want Him to say that to me. Uh, he didn't say it. He didn't say it. Here's how you know. <laughs> Matthew 25 and 14. Ready? Now, it says... For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country who calleth his own servants and delivereth unto them his goods. It says the kingdom of heaven is as a man. Not is a man, but as a man. It's after similar to. Watch this. 
And unto one he gave five talents, and unto another he gave two, and unto another he gave one. And every man according to his several ability, and straightway he took journey. All right. He never had five talents. He gave made extra five talents. I'm just I'm, I'm paraphrasing so I get through this. And likewise, he that received two talents in the 17th verse, gained the other two. But he that had received one talent went and digged into the earth and hid his Lord's money. Now, and after a long time, right? After a long time, so he returned. He cometh and he reckoned them, and he that has five talents brought five other talents, 21st, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I've gained besides them five more talents. Watch this. So much so, and his Lord said unto him, and the Lord said, and the Lord said unto him, don't say that. This is Jesus narrating this. <laughs> oh my God. Jesus is telling the story. He didn't say, the Lord said. He's one telling the story to teach them. He's giving them an example. But look what he says. And his Lord said. He didn't say, the Lord said. Jesus didn't say it. God didn't say it. He's telling you that the Lord that, that, that was over that man was his Lord because that's the way they did things. He told them that. He said, and his Lord is what, is what it says. His Lord said unto him, Well done, our good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things, and I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of who? Thy Lord. Not the Lord. But first of all, even if Jesus had said this, it would be detrimental to us. Why? Well, because, look, thou hast been a faithful servant. That just knocks most of us right out the window. Not right out the box. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. I just want to hear him say, well done, how good and faithful. Well, wait, wait, wait. When have we been faithful? And what have we been faithful to? Remember, most of us haven't come nowhere near his standards yet. How are we so faithful? How will we expect, look, especially as going back to Hosea, if we're still lying and cheating and whoremongering and everything else, well done, now good and faithful servant. We haven't kept our lives clean faithfully enough yet. <clears throat> and he went to him, the 22nd verse, him that had the two talents, and lived down in two towns, and I now have gained, and so on, so on, so on. And he said, look, and his Lord, again, and his Lord said unto him, Well done, now good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things, now make thee ruler over many things, enter to the joy of thy Lord. Jesus is telling the story. He's not the Lord in this. Whoops. Then he was received one talent. 24th verse came and said, Lord, I knew that thou art a hard man. I knew that. Reaping where thou sowest not, without, thou hast not sown, and gathering where thou hast not strawed. And I was afraid and went and hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, here thou hast that is thine. So now the Lord, if this was the Lord like we think it is, if he showed him, you said, Lord, here, I got my life clean just like you left it. Here it is. This is yours, Lord. It's not enough. Watch. And his Lord answered in the 25th verse and said unto him, Thou wicked. Uh-oh. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. I'm giving you back what you gave me. This is yours. You wicked and slothful servant. Watch what he says. Thou knowest that I reap what I sow not, and gather what I have not strawed. Thou art therefore to have put my money to the exchangers. And then at my coming, I should have received mine own with usury. You should have put it in the bank. Because if you look at the definition, you put it with the money changer. You should have put it in the bank, and at least when you came back, I would have had interest. Showing that even if our lives are up to par, where God wants it, and we didn't have no idea where that is. If our lives are up to par, He wants more out of us. Well, tell me, in this undertaking, what does the Lord require of thee? What does the Lord require of us? Do any of us really know? 
one thing he does require, and we should know this, we should all know this, he requires fellowship. How much time are we giving him? Are we giving him any time? Will I, will I pray while I'm going? Uh, don't try it. Don't try it. If you don't pray at home and you don't pray at church, you ain't praying while you're going. You're trying to con somebody. And by the way, if we are praying like we claim we are, why aren't we clean yet? Real fellowship with God cleanses you. We don't have real fellowship like we claim, but we'll, but you give us a space. <coughs> I get my step in, and I'm, shoot, I can't get my shout, I get, can't get my praise on. And I'm not clean. Look what he says. You should put up the exchanger, and usually and I should have something when I got back. Watch 28. Take therefore the talent from him. He told somebody, look, take it from him. You knew you should have gave me, at least given me interest. Take it from him. Look, <laughs> and give it to him that had ten. He deserves an extra one. He worked. He produced. He was fruitful. So the father didn't have to take him away. He was fruitful. Watch this. Mm. For everyone that, watch the life for everyone that hath shall be given. Uh-oh. I ain't got nothing God gave me. I haven't maintained nothing God gave me. He that hath shall be given. Is that what it says? And he had, and he shall have abundance. But from him that hath not shall be taken away even that which he hath. You're not praying. I'm not praying. We're not seeking the face of God. We're not obedient. And God will allow whatever you got to be taken. Don't listen to these folks telling you, you know, just, just name it and claim it and you ain't obeyed God. God will come and take our stuff. <clears throat> That's what he just said. Oh, God. Watch this. And cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. I gave you something so you, and what was in it is everything you need was in it because I know what it takes. I'm your Lord. This is what, you know, the Lord would be saying. And you should have put it out to use me. I could, I should have came back and at least got interest. You ain't do none of that. Take him. Cast him into outer darkness. Weeping and gnashing of teeth. What are we thinking? I mean, it's just me, you know. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm kind, of, you know, I'm kind of crazy, you know. <laughs> I'm kind of nuts like that. Let's go look at John 12. John 12. I want to show you what what a problem we have. Now, many of us aren't fruitful because we didn't get the work done. We didn't get the work done. Don't live for the church. Live for God in the church. At this stage of the game, uh, you can keep the church doctrine. You can, you can keep what you believe. I'm set to obey him. I'm the type of guy, look, give me a job. Like, like, like right now, I'm 70 and change years old. Guess what? If I need some extra money, doc will find a job if God don't bless it. I'll get it. I look. Look, I'll get out there and work like some of them young boys. These young boys today don't know how to work. <laughs> they don't know about no work. Move over. I was in the store and the guy walked by this other young guy. They're they working at this food line. And one guy walked by the other guy. Them, yeah, man. He said, You know, I'm the OG up in this place. And he walked by me. I chuckled. He looked at me and smiled. He said, I am an OG. I said, How old are you? Well, I'm an OG to him. I said, okay, then don't come, don't come by me talking about OG. You don't know about no OG, partner. Like that, right? He bust out laughing. Because, see, a lot of these young folks think they know what they're doing. They don't know what they're doing. You know what? Because most of us old folks just figured out what we're doing. So, are you an OG? I mean, you know, I'm an OG because they do drive-bys. You know, where we came up, it was Knuckle Drill City. And you, you was an OG. You was a real OG. You understand what I'm saying? What are you doing with your life before God? Nothing. Imagine that your destiny of your future is in God's hands and yours. Nothing else matters. Not mama, not daddy, not wife, not husband, not children. That, you know, they have their place, they have their love, but look, when all is said and done, none of them going to face God for you. 
So you need to let go of mama, daddy, sister, brother, husband, wife, respectfully, you know, having place for them, because if you don't, you're going to run into a problem. Watch what he says. Verily, verily, John 12 and 24, verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn or grain of wheat fall into the ground and die. Except you die, go back to the sixth chapter of Romans. If any man be in Christ, you know, over in the Romans they don't say this, so, you know, how we should be dead in Christ. We should be crucified in Christ. Are we dead yet? Here's what happens. I tell you why we're not fruitful. I tell you why we're not growing, why we're not developing, why we're not maintaining. Because the corn of wheat, except the corn of wheat, fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, when we give ourselves completely to him and die, it bringeth forth much fruit. We're not fruitful in the things of God because we're not dead yet. And we're not trying to die. Our old flesh, Paul said, I keep under my body. Most of us just let our body run free. Our emotions, whatever we feel for the moment. I know people that... The enemy has tricked them so much in their character, their idea of staying above and ahead of people, one step in front of folks, and being sharp and witty and clever, lying and everything else, that you know, hey, I'm on the point, I'm on top of the world. But don't know, that's the poison to their soul. You can't do like that and, and name the name of the Lord. Well, you can name it if you like. But guess what? Even if you were in Christ, which you aren't in Christ, Lying and stealing and cutting up. If you were in Christ, you can't be fruitful in the things of God. And the Father watcheth to take us away. A branch that, oh, that is a, a, a tremendous that the Father is watching. If a branch is not fruitful in Christ, the Father takes it away. We don't even look at that. So we abide alone if we don't yield ourselves. To, and here's the problem. Watch this. He that loveth his life shall lose it. And what we don't understand, this is God speaking in His own operation of things. If you love your life, you're going to lose it. I'm going to see to it. I gave mine for you. Jesus gave His life for you. You love your life more than, hey, you love your life more than me, you're going to lose it. You seek to save your life, you're going to lose it. And he that hateth his life, where? In this world. Oh, find his own life detestable. Well, I got news for you. If we open our eyes, it's not hard to do. All you got to look at all the things that you've done to get where you are and what you did behind the scenes and what ran through your heart. And we should all be broken, fall repented before the Father. And we don't. We should yield our lives to the Master because we, we have been carried by the wind, that the Spirit that now works in the children of disobedience. We've been carried by that. Every wind and doctrine have taken us from place to place. And we haven't been settled yet. You and I should fall prostrate, prostrate before the Father. Yielded, broken, surrendered. For he that seeks to save his life, he's going to lose it. And he that, he, except the man hate his life in this world, look, except. And he, and he that hates his life in this world, if you hate life in this world, shall keep it unto life eternal. He wants you to offer your life to him. Wait, wait, wait. For your own sake. That's the part that gets me. He wants this for our sakes, and we won't do it. Well, this is my life. Okay, all right. What's left of it? Go ahead and knock yourself out. Watch this. Let's do this. Let's go to Matthews 13. And 22. Matthew 13 and 22. Here is the problem. When we try to live our lives like everybody else, we fail. In this undertaking, what know ye not that ye are not your own? But we are bought with a price, therefore glorify God in our body and our spirits, which are God's. We forget that. Once we get feeling good about ourselves and God's blessing us and we achieve the goals we want, we get out there and we forget God. It, see what they got in trouble with? God said, because you believed in falsehood, you forgot me. You forgot me and believed in falsehood. 
Watch what he says. Matthew 13, 22. He also that receiveth seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word in Christ, in God, heareth the word and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and he becometh unfruitful. Anything that's going to choke you to make you become unfruitful, you don't want. Why? Remember, he is the vine. We are the branches. Any branch that abides in him is that's not fruitful, the Father taketh away. So watch this. Watch this scenario. So we're going along and, you know, God done bless us and we got things we're doing, things we're successful with our wives, with our husbands, with our kids, with our job, all the things successful. And we're forgetting God. We become unfruitful. So the Father's watching us become unfruitful and any branch that abideth in me and becomes unfruitful, the Father taketh it away. My point was saying is that the enemy is tricking us into the place where God will jack us himself. What are we thinking? He said, without me, you can't do anything. Your success is because of me. He told this, he said, don't forget, when you come into the land that the God has sworn to your fathers to give you, don't forget God, it is he that gives the power to get wealth. So now we're doing the same thing in 2020, 2022, we're doing the exact same thing, forgetting God, and we're becoming unfruitful. And the scripture lets us know. And I'm showing you these things. Hey, what do you got to do? I have to blow the trumpet. I have to warn you. And <laughs> Ephesians. Let's go to Ephesians 5 and 6. I don't care what folks are telling you. Watch this. Ephesians 5 and 6. Ephesians, the fifth chapter and the sixth verse. Let no man deceive you with vain words. Hollow, empty. But see, we don't know it if we're not seeking the face of God. It's going to sound good to your flesh. Watch this. For because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Be not ye therefore partakers with them. For ye, look at this, look at this. For ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. You can't walk like everybody else. You have to walk like children of light. And as it said in the sixth chapter of Romans, as those that are alive from the dead. You gotta walk them. You gotta live them. If you don't and you walk like them and you live like them, or I walk like them and I live like them, I get what they get, and there's judgment coming. I look, I'm not committing suicide. <laughs> I ain't killing me now or at the end. I'm going to do what the master say do. And if folks don't like it, God bless you. Uh, <laughs> oh, that is too funny. I, I got to show you this. 2 Peter 1 and 5. 2 Peter 1 and 5. And besides this, 2 Peter 1 and 5. And besides this, giving all diligence, urgency, quickness, strongness, add to your faith virtue and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness charity. Watch this, watch this. For if these things be in you, the gave you the list, tells you what to add. If these things be in you, look what it says, a verse, and what? Abound. That means grow, produce, and abound. They make you that you shall what? Neither be barren, nor unfruitful. Oh, oh God. And the, the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we want to get the right things in us so we're not barren and unfruitful. Are you hearing that? Let's do this last thing. I want to make sure we get this in. Go to Revelation 22. I want to show you something. Revelation 22 and 11. Revelation 22 and 11. I, I call these out so you can write them down. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. 
And he that is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. That means you're going to stay that way. And I guess it's just suggestion. You're going to stay that way. So all this, all this my life, I've been living ungodly and unrighteous. And all of a sudden, I ask, Lord, forgive me. He's telling you if that's the way you are, stay that way. He said, Behold, I've come quickly. Let's move now. I want to make sure I get this in. Revelation 22 and 14. Watch this. Blessed are they that do his commandments. Blessed are they that do his commandments. Again. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have the right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates into the city. If we don't have his commandments and don't keep them, you or I don't have a right to the tree of life. You or I can't enter into the city. And the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience is in most of us that are in the buildings we call church. Because we do whatever we want to do. We have no respect for the sanctuary. We have no respect for the house of God. We do whatever we want to do. We come in any old kind of way. And we expect God. But one thing I learned years ago, you got to respect the house of God. When we were in the building as pastor, I tell folks, we do not talk in the sanctuary. When service is over, you can greet folks on the way out, you know, have a few words, but you ain't have a long conversation out in my sanctuary or not, because that's God's house. Wait, why don't we go to your house and talk? Why don't just all of us come over and talk and stand around and laugh and cut up in your living room? Not going to do that, right? Not going to do the house of God. Not why I'm an usher. <laughs> and I've got people that put your hips out there, and they go, look, service is over, time to go. Get everybody out. Got a foyer out there, got a hallway out there, got a, a break room. Let's go around there and talk. Not in God's house. We're trying to go to heaven, and we're not going to make it. Watch what it says. For without our dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and, what, and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. But you and I have to obey him to get in. What are we thinking? Set a regimen immediately. Repent if you have backslidden in your heart, if you are backslidden in your life before God. Repent and clean your life up. If you haven't been saved, get delivered, get this thing in you for real, and learn to walk and obey God.